The American Midwest. Recently, I've been traveling to a bunch of places within the region that I'd either only heard of but never been, or that I'd never even heard of at all. Wherever I found myself, I did the thing I always do. Explore. Join me. This is Tom in the Midwest. Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I am Tom and I am in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I had no idea this was such a beautiful city. But I mean, like look at this. This is the City Hall building. Now Milwaukee actually has a pretty interesting public transportation system. Mostly consists of buses operated by the MCTS um, with some unique buses like one that runs from downtown to a prison and there's a high school here that contracts the MCTS to run special buses to and from their school rather than using yellow school buses. But from the 1860s, Milwaukee actually had a streetcar network that lasted for almost a century. The last segments were scrapped in 1958 to make way for the interstate highway system. But starting in the 1990s, we saw a trend in American cities where new light rail and streetcar lines were being built. And 60 years after the last streetcar in Milwaukee closed, the new streetcar opened in 2018. Now this new line is only two miles long. It's called the Hop and we're gonna ride it today. Now I'm gonna point out different features of the Hop, but the two takeaways I want you to get are that the Hop is free and that for part of the route, the Hop runs on battery power. This building is the Amtrak Milwaukee Intermodal Station. Once a day, you can catch the Empire Builder here to Seattle and Portland, but seven times a day, you can also catch the Hiawatha to Chicago. Now, the hop leaves from right next to the Intermodal Station. So let's hop on over to the hop stop and hop on the hop. As you can see, the intermodal station is right there. And over here is the hop. So let's get on this train. We're leaving the intermodal station right now. My first impression of these trams is that they are very modern and very clean. There's a few scuff marks here and there, but uh, compared to the transit in Chicago or Minneapolis, it looks really good. Now we're gonna try the seats. They look a little bit padded, so I'm gonna see if they're comfortable. Very comfortable. Maybe one of the best light rail seats I've ever sat on. So each of these light rail vehicles is made up of three segments and the front and back segment are high floor, but the middle segment, which has all the doors, is low floor, which allows for level boarding. Because of this, the wheelchair spaces in each vehicle are in this middle segment. Though the line is only two miles long, there are hooks on board to hang your bicycle from, so you can bring a bike on the tram. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a total sucker for these LCD screens that provide passenger information. I just think they make the interior look sharp and they enhance the passenger experience. Regular non-digital maps are also available throughout the vehicle. This next thing kind of made me chuckle. The code of conduct was printed in both English and Spanish, 
but the last one is identical in both languages. These vehicles are a streetcar known as the Liberty by American manufacturer Brookville. In total, there are five Brookville Liberties running on the Milwaukee Hop. Between Historic Third Ward and Cathedral Square stations, the trams actually run on different streets depending on which direction they're running. That train was great. I thought especially the passenger information was awesome. Not only did they have the big screens, but the announcements were really easy to hear and you know, told you which side to get off, even reminded you to press the button. Really great system. Uh, let's check out the stops real quick. This is the City Hall stop. So it's just like a raised platform next to the street with a little shelter. They've got these like things you can lean on. The shelter itself provides information like a map, a timetable, So here at City Hall Station, you can see that there's the overhead catenary right where it's supposed to be. But if we follow that wire, it ends there. Now the tracks don't, they continue. So yeah, the middle part of the hop is not electrified. And on that section, the trains actually run on battery power. So when they're connected to the overhead wires, they're obviously using that power to move, but they're also charging their batteries for that short little section in between where they run wire free. And I don't really know why they don't have wires in that section, whether it's like an aesthetics thing or a cost thing, but either way, it works. And it's something we see in other cities around the world too. So the tracks continue all the way to Burns Commons, which is right by Lake Michigan. I didn't go all the way to the lake today because I had limited time and the streetcars only run every 15 minutes. But here at Ogden and Jackson, the overhead wires continue all the way down to the lake. So when this Brookville Liberty arrives, we're going to watch the pantograph come down. And then on the other side, we're going to watch it go up again.
Now, one thing that might seem like it's missing from these platforms is a fare validator or a ticket machine. It's not missing, they just don't exist. See, when the hop opened in 2018, the plan was to offer one year of free rides. However, they haven't really found a good fare card system yet, or so I've read. So even now in 2022, rides on the hop are completely free. You heard that right, free. So while that part is super nice, this line is pretty useless for commuters because it's only two miles long and exclusively runs downtown. Now one question remains, why is the current existing line called the M line? That is because in the near future there will actually be a second streetcar route in Milwaukee. And over here between the historic 3rd Ward and Wisconsin Avenue stops, we see some tracks. Those are not in use yet, but will be as part of a branch line known as the L line, which last I checked was supposed to open at the end of this year. End of this year is coming pretty soon, so we'll see. The L line will also use segments of unelectrified track with battery use. This was my video on the Milwaukee Hop. Um, I was only here for a short period of time, but got to ride a few of these light rails and I just had such a fun time. Sure, the network is short and it should be a lot bigger. I mean, this is a great product, clean, modern light rail vehicles for Milwaukee. Nevertheless, um, it connects important parts of downtown with like transportation hubs and the lake shore. So it is a very good start for Milwaukee. Thank you so much for watching today. Please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this. We also have an Instagram and a Patreon that uh, I invite you to check out. It is raining right now, so uh, consider this video over.